So today, I'm going to be reviewing a website called HeroForge. If you're not familiar with it, basically it's a 3D interface in your web browser that lets you design your hero. Once you've got it customized the way you want it, you get to order it and they'll 3D print it and ship it to you. If you are familiar with the service, stick around because I'm going to be reviewing their new high quality plastic. You start out by choosing a genre for your hero, and this affects the templates that give you access to different types of clothing, gear, weapons, etc. If you want, you can choose all and just have access to everything. Uh, but there's a lot of customization options from Hero Forge, so it's good to pick something to cover your general look, and then when you're tweaking it at the end, maybe come back and choose all or choose a different genre to incorporate items from these other options into your character. When you start out, you've got a bunch of uh, options between male, female, and even some other races. And then you also get to choose the body style as a preset. All of this gets customized later on. Um, I first discovered Hero Forge when looking for miniature for a Dungeons and Dragons game uh, for my wife, for a uh, dwarf actually, a female dwarf. There aren't many options out there, but by going with uh, a company like Hero Forge, you get exactly the option that you want. You create exactly the hero that you want. So as you can see, plenty of faces to choose from for defaults, but all of that you end up getting to customize. So when you're done choosing the face you want to start with, you then get sliders. You can choose default expressions and move around to uh, to make the face look exactly how you want. And plenty of custom options for the ears as well, the eyes, and even lots of options for hair. So you can come in here and really just choose what you want. Uh, in this case, beard, not appropriate. Not for this character. But just to show you some of the options, there's there's some great choices here if you wanted to make a, uh, a character with a pretty epic beard or just a simple mustache. But we're gonna we're gonna pass on that. Um, maybe pick some eyebrows to match that hair. Kind of like that. And then continuing on, you get to choose teeth as well as horns. It's it's really cool how you can see the changes that you're choosing and it just it really comes together just like when making the face your options for the body at the beginning are fully customizable so we come back in here and we make it look like whatever we want and you can even do other options like adding wings on or a tail and keep in mind if you're looking to do a little bit of customization um, when you get the miniature in, you could always slice that tail off and reposition it um, if you wanted to, uh, or, or shorten it a little bit. Um, so it's not just what you're looking at here. Think of it, you, you modify miniatures. There's nothing that says you can't modify a Hero Forge figure. Like everything else, clothes start out with a bunch of predefined outfits that you'll then be able to modify down the road. And these are defined by the genre of uh, your miniature that you picked at the beginning. I like that hood, but at the same time, it gets rid of that awesome hair I chose. So you just go into the headwear, and bam, it it uh, it just goes away when you choose it. Um, you give some like kind of techy uh, goggles on there. Um, kind of like that actually. Uh, oh. Loop your mini into an earring, necklace, or Christmas tree ornament. That's cool. So not only can you make a miniature, um, but you can actually choose a uh, loop here as an option to go on the top so that you can make a keychain or, or any other item from it. That's, that's really cool. To continue on, tons of options to dress your character exactly how you want. And these all stem from the genre you chose at the beginning. So you can always go back, choose a different one, if you want to add a little bit of a flair from another style to your character. This same principle is then applied to choosing what your character should be holding. 
whether that's a uh, an open hand, a closed fist, a weapon, a sensor, or other objects, including magical effects, and you choose it on a left hand versus right hand basis. There are also items listed as side items, and those get placed on the hips of your character, again, left or right side. And that's, that's what's great about a site like this, is that it's so fluid, it's so easy to change your mind and to change what you're creating. Um, so let's, I think, looking at this overall, I'm going to say that those boots don't really fit in with a, a more generic uh, fantasy look. Maybe the boots and the pants we, uh, we need to change. But that's okay. We just choose the genre that we want the clothes to be from and then go in, pick a new set. I guess if you're going to strap your cyber deck, see this is where if you choose something like wings, they kind of get in the way. So this is where we have to choose. Do we keep the wings? Do we add a backpack? I'm kind of digging the wings, but it's so easy to make changes. So where were wings? Body, wings. Let's take those off. Let's let's build her back and decide if we're going to put the wings back or keep a pack. As we get down to the base, you can see that there's multiple options for bases as well as the size and uh, the design. And then you can include some little details like crystals and even small little pets on the base itself. If your character should be riding a mount, there's even a few options for that too, um, which I'll get into poses later, but those affect how it looks here. So now pose is where it gets really cool. You've got all these different options, so if, if you were tired of just how she looked the whole time, there's options. Um, oh, that's got some character there. I really like that one. Um, ooh so many good like this I'm liking how she looks I think I've ended up spending just as much time choosing the pose for my characters as I do for designing the character itself because ultimately this is what adds the character to your character this is what makes them seem alive when you choose how it's going to be printed it'll put a d20 next to your character as an idea of scale um, 30 mm millimeter by default, but you can double or quadruple that, so you get a fairly large figure. But going to the larger sizes limits what materials your character can be made in. If you want, you can get steel or uh, bronze uh, figures sent to you. There's mixed results with some of their older plastics. Um, the lower quality plastic being durable, but not very detailed whereas the higher detailed figure um, not being too durable. I'm going to be reviewing their new gray plastic and this is, uh, you might have seen the video going around where they pull the Eiffel Tower out of a pool of liquid and it's a new method of printing miniatures. It's new to Hero Forge um, in beta right now so they're, they're seeing how these things work um, but look at the detail on that that is fantastic. So that is, uh, that's the choice that we're going to go with. Um, you'll see that the price does change here. It's a little bit different. Um, low detail, $15. So uh, the, the high detail one, 25. I think if you're paying 25 for high detail, spend five more dollars to go to the uh, gray plastic. That makes sense. Um, and uh, I think I like what we've created here today. So I'm going to order this. And when she comes in, I'm going to take a bunch of pictures, see how the 3D printing looks. Then I'm going to paint her up. And I'm going to talk about how, uh, how does the primer stick, how does the paint stick, how's the texture for painting on. And how do all these little details, things like... Um, the difference between where her, uh, her fingers and her glove change, uh, how does the feet, her, her, uh, her eyelids, um, how does all that end up doing? How's the durability 
in things like the uh, the handle of this lamp and uh, the tail. How does all that work? I'm gonna let you know. So the other thing that I want to show here is that you can actually um, if you make an account you can name them uh, the character that you've made, you can save them, and you can actually store a bunch of characters that you've created. Um, that way anytime in the future you come back to HeroForge.com you log in and you can just go to my characters and you'd be like oh here's that other character that I just created or you know there's the uh, the cleric that I made for that Dungeons and Dragons game uh, months ago and then since it doesn't cost anything to design a character you might as well just go to HeroForge.com try it out play around and see what you can create see if you find that hero in you know in that pose that uh, you know makes you say you know what that's my character I can't find a miniature that quite looks right I can make it so it takes two to three weeks to get your figures in um, that's a little bit longer for me because I live in Canada and it's printed by a company called Shapeways who are the same company that I sell my 3d arc pucks through they do a lot of custom 3D printing, and Hero Forge and them just make a great partnership. Now keep in mind you end up customizing how tall your figure is, but it's basically on par to other miniatures that you're used to. Ultra-fine 3D printing doesn't layer material, so you get a very smooth finish. For the most part, all those little lines that you see aren't visible once your figure is primed. Some of them are, but it barely has an impact on the figure. Now, we all have the idea of not having to deal with mold lines either, but as you can see, there are some little knobs that you end up having to clean off with an X-Acto knife before priming. The plastic itself is very durable. If you're familiar with Reaper, it's actually stronger than that. But it is worth noting that when I was almost done painting her, the handle of the lantern broke. And I had to glue that back on, just on one side. Speaking of that lantern, it's free floating. It actually dangles and wiggles back and forth. Since I wanted to test for imperfections, I painted her by watering down my paints and kind of washing them on. So as you can see, all those little lines really aren't being picked up, except in the base for whatever reason. As for the detail compared to the figure we designed online and the figure we received in person, most of it's there. Most of the fine detail stuff is there. The gloves, you can tell where the glove ends and the skin begins, but looking at the face, you can't see the teeth in the mouth and you can't really make out too much of the detail around the eyes. After I got the base layers on her front and back, I then went over with more washes. Um, a little bit of the lines are visible when you look at the back and around all of the, uh, the curves and stuff, but it's not having too much of an impact on the figure. To finish her up, I've gone back and painted her with more traditional techniques, shading, highlighting, layering. Not layering the paint very thick, and all those lines go away. Didn't do much more with the base, so you can still see them down there, but as you see like on her cuffs and stuff, and on the back of her cloak, they've all but disappeared. Painting on the plastic reminded me of painting any other pewter or standard plastic miniature, not like painting on a super gloss uh, plastic that you might find in a Reaper miniature or like a board game piece. So what's my overall impression of Hero Forge? I loved it. Uh, I would definitely use their services again. The quality, while it's not perfect, it's really excellent um, when you consider that you're designing your character in 3d through a web page and then being shipped exactly the character that you ordered it looks really good now sure the price is a little on the higher end for the quality that you receive but when you consider it an investment in a character that maybe you're playing in Dungeons and Dragons Pathfinder or Shadowrun over the course of a year or more to have a character that looks exactly like the figure that you're moving around the battle map, that's pretty cool. Now, Hero Forge isn't the only company doing this. 
but they are the only one I'm aware of that offers you this level of customization. I'm also super excited to see where this paves the way for miniatures in the future. Because imagine if your favorite miniature game picked up this kind of technology. Maybe not for every figure in a squad, but imagine if the hero, if the champion of the squad, if the army leader, um, if the standout figures were something that you could go to a website like Hero Forge, customize how they look, put the war gear on them, put them into a pose that you want, and then order it, that's the future that I see for miniatures.